All right, we go back now to that uh, story with the Minister of uh, Police and the backlog in DNA testing. For some reaction, I'm joined now by the EFF's Member of Parliament, Naledi Chira. Naledi, good evening and thank you for your time. The first thing is the Minister offering an apology for the backlog. But the second thing is, of course, the reasons that he is giving for a lack of consumables. Pretty much saying, well, there was no money. I mean, is, is that an adequate uh, enough response for you? Okay, you're muted. Good evening. Yes, I just, I just admitted just now. Good evening to you and everyone who's watching at home. First of all, I mean, even the issue of the apology is something that is appalling. Um, that victims of rape, victims of gender-based violence, of gruesome crimes, the LGBTQI children as young as three years old, and women are given an apology by the executive and not justice. And they must carry an apology in their pockets when they go to tuck shops and bump into their rapists. They must carry apologies with them in their homes because some of these perpetrators live with them at home. But more than anything, it highlights that we've been given lies over and over again. Just last year, President Cyril Ramaphosa said that they pledged one billion into the gender-based violence fund. And when we asked him what exactly that money is going to do to stop rapes from happening or to prevent, uh, to put in preventative measures or to garner justice for victims of rape, he did not give a precise or concise answer. And now fast forward to this year, we are at a point where the government is blatantly admitting the fact that they did not prioritize issues of gender-based violence, issues of rape, despite the fact that over the past two decades, activists across the country have been calling out for justice because rape continues to be an issue in South Africa, a crisis that puts us on top of the, of the map, even globally, and that we are given an apology by the executive is something that should garner uproar from society at large because it means that justice is always going to be rhetoric uh, for women, for children, LGBTIQ people who continue to die each and every day while the specimens, while evidence that they carried on their bodies to police stations are just stored in fridges and not being processed. Uh, so it's definitely a crisis. Is there transparency at what is actually happening at, at uh, the procurement level? Because, I mean, in April it was reported that there, there were, for, for example, tenders approved already in the Eastern Cape with Treasury approving over 12 million rands to funding the, the support and enhancement of forensic and laboratory services. Yet we are hearing now that there is uh, no money. What happened to those tenders? Well, the process is that the tendering system, that is what we get for uh, succumbing to the tendering system, not putting enough pressure on the state as society, besides just the EFF, but as society at large. And that is what we also brought to light, even Izolo, to say that you must insource the entire process from making the manufacturing of DNA kits, from processing them, from delivering them to police stations, and so on and so forth, because the tender premiering system is premised on profits. And if a government entrusts the private sector with issues of justice, then we are left to be uh, hanging on to clutches and clutching on straws because justice is not a priority for private businesses whose priority is capital, whose priority is profit. And that is why even today the issue of transparency still suffices in portfolio committee meetings, in debates in parliament, because those particular companies don't necessarily account or are held accountable by uh, parliament, but by the these departments, the very same departments that we problematize to be incapacitated, to not be capacity enough, even if when we see the lack that they are going through. So to address the issue of the, of the, of the transparency in relation to the businesses that get um, tenders that from the state in relation particularly to the DNA kits processing and uh, delivering these to police stations, the entire process must be insourced. The government must capacitate itself. The state must be capacitated to deal with these issues in-house because it will never go away. It's not something that we can wish away in the next two years, in the next five years, especially when there aren't enough preventative measures happening. These are things or issues that we've been having even prior um, to the post-democratic uh, dispensation in South Africa. Women, children who make up 40 percent of the race in the country, gay people uh, will not uh, find justice so long as even the process of acquiring justice is left out to the private sector mm -hmm. and not the state itself. Talk to me then about the, the accountability role, the, the, the oversight role that you're going to play in this matter. Meanwhile, the minister has said now more money will be 
pushed into the consumables, uh, uh, including uh, addressing the backlog, but also uh, they will be uh, uh, putting a new track and trace system uh, of the specimen. Uh, what, what will be your role now, your oversight role, to, to ensure that this is not just another promise, you know? Because we had this conversation in December when the backlog was still at 170. It's now 208. Yes. It just keeps continuing. I mean, as the economic freedom fighters, we continue our oversight roles in various ways. Firstly, the formation of the gender-based violence desk of the EFF was formulated for that particular purpose, to ensure that the victims on the ground level, people who don't get to trend on Twitter and thus get the attention of the state and public rest, are able to have allies who will actively follow through with them through the process to ensure that they get justice. And secondly, over and beyond that, we continue as members of parliament to do oversight visits to these police uh, station branches where we find these situations that are coming up in portfolio committee meetings, in debates, and so on and so forth. And But also even beyond that, we continue to give out the recommendations to the minister. For example, we even recommended that they merge the system at home affairs with that uh, of the SAPS to make tracking a speedy process. Uh, and those things are not being done because, again, the issue is commitment. The issue is political will. We are obscuring ourselves and fooling ourselves if we think that the government of the ANC will ever prioritize bringing justice gender-based violence victims across the country. They have the money to do that. They have the capacity to do that. It's just not a priority. And, uh, of course, uh, particularly on this score, following the answers that uh, you have been given uh, by the minister. When next are you holding minister before parliament to answer on uh, the progress that he's made? I mean, it's going to be an entire process. For example, there's already a, a program in parliament that we follow. I think that is where the, uh, the determination or rather the process of the, the parliament becomes quite agitating and irritating uh, to some extent. And for many people, especially young people, because we don't have the tolerance and the patience for these processes to unfold. Um, but over and above that, those are issues that are still being discussed in portfolio committee meetings. Um, the fact that we've gotten to a point where there's even laws being enacted is because of the work of members of parliament and the portfolio committee of police in particular. Um, but the process of holding and sending questions to ministers continues nonetheless. So for example, we will continue sending questions to the ministers like we have sent even to the Minister of uh, Correctional Services, Ronald Ramula, who then brought to force the attention, the fact that uh, some and many of the cases that are struck off the roll in court are done so because there isn't evidence or there's outstanding DNA evidence. And that is how then we are able to hold the minister accountable. That's why then you have to, you find in a situation where the minister has to come in front of parliament and be held accountable. And then again, uh, just leave us with mere promises and apologies that we can't use as a country. But more than anything, I think for the people at home, this should highlight a much bigger issue that we have issues that we are facing as women, as the LGBTQI, that are not being prioritized. And that is primarily the issue at hand right here. How then do we move towards ensuring that these issues are prioritized beyond uh, in portfolio committee meetings, beyond uh, in parliament debates and all of that? It rests upon us as public reps, as civil society, as NGOs, to ensure that the expose work is done on the ground. Even with the media as well, these cases should not just be written about when a person trends on Twitter or if a case is high profile. The media also has a prerogative to go to the grassroots level to find out which are these cases, who are these eight, uh, 82,000 people whose cases are not being heard in court, whose cases are going to be struck off the roll just because the police decided to keep their evidence in fridges and not process them so that their trials can continue. Um, so it definitely rests upon the entire society to ensure that justice is served because in, in, in the current light, in the current situation that we are going through, it's not going to happen under the leadership of President Cyril Ramaphosa and Minister Pirikale. You can bet with your life on that. What will happen otherwise is the fact that they will continue finding alcohol uh, in booths when regulations and level lockdown uh, levels are, are, are taken up because already we've stepped into the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic uh, in South Africa, as per the minister's assertions. Um, but beyond that, it should strengthen our organizing on the ground. The EFF gender-based violence desk is available to each and every person. The contact details are shared on EFF platform. Um, and our ground forces, our leadership, led by Commissar and DSG, Popi Mailula, are doing the work to ensure that justice is served and that apologies and excuses and promises do not suffice as enough. Naledi, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us tonight, TFF Member of Parliament, Naledi Chira.